What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're gonna be talking about everything going on with Season 6 Reloaded, another mystery download, and even more for Black Ops Cold War. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and be sure to check out our wonderful partner Manscaped, who recently released a variety of products with the Performance Package 4.0. You can clean your bombs on there like never before with the Lawn Mower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Trimmer for our nose and ears, the Crop Preserver Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Toner. There's also some free gifts like the Magic Mat, the Manscaped Boxers, and the Luxury Travel Bag. Be sure to click on the link down below in the description and use code TWITCH20 to save 20% off your order. But if you guys are a little upset that the Triple Double event has ended for Cold War and Warzone, we have another one coming later this Friday, bringing double XP, weapon XP, and double battle pass tiers all across the board for multiplayer, zombies, and even battle royale. Today we got confirmation that Call of Duty Vanguard will feature full dual sense support for the PlayStation 5, with adaptive trigger support, which is different for each weapon class, and haptic feedback that works with the reactive environments of Call of Duty Vanguard itself. Pretty exciting news and we got the same support for Cold War. I'm also assuming we'll get the same support for any future Call of Duty as well, regardless of PlayStation exclusivity and whether or not that's still tied to Call of Duty in the foreseeable future. I'm sure it probably will be, but I also want to point out Tier 90 of the Season 6 Battle Pass. I'm curious if you guys noticed this, right? Look at that pistol that Antonov is holding there in the artwork. What pistol is that? That's clearly not a 1911 or the Amati or any other pistol that is available in Cold War multiplayer, so is that the Makarov pistol? I certainly think so, but the question question is, right, if that is the Makarov in this artwork, what does that mean? Is the Makarov pistol going to get added as a DLC weapon at some point in the future of Colder's life cycle or even beyond Colder's life cycle during Vanguard's year? Or is this another one of those cases where it's artwork that contains placeholder content or content that doesn't really mean much? It's just there to look pretty. So let me know in the comments how you're feeling about that. I certainly think that's the Makarov pistol based on the snout and the look of the pistol itself there at tier 90. But figured I'd point that out in case you guys did miss that or not. You never know. You might get the Bono for treatment with Cold War's year 2 cycle where all of a sudden at very random points during Vanguard season, we end up getting some additional Cold War DLC weapons. But earlier today, as I was recording another video, we ended up getting a massive surprise from PlayStation Size over on Twitter, who has reported yet again another mystery download for Black Ops Cold War. Update 1.26 has appeared in the database over on his end. And we know we just got update 1.25 a couple of days ago, which we all downloaded, but it's still unclear what exactly that update brought to us, because people out there who are 3D artists usually get to see if any new content is added to the files of the game, and nothing new has been found, right? This isn't supporting data mining, but simply this is the way all updates go, right? 3D artists who rip models using Greyhound usually are able to see any new assets or content that gets added to the game's files with every new title update. So nothing was found on update 1.25, maybe something was deeply encrypted, or somehow they've kept it away from the general public from finding or this is something else, right? It was building the foundation for something greater. We have another mystery download coming up, 1.26, that has to be Season 6 Reloaded, right? Because as I pointed out in yesterday's video, I think some obvious proof that we are getting another big update to Cold War that nobody's talking about is the fact that COD Tracker is only reported on 30 plus bundles that are in the database for Black Ops Cold War. Whereas other seasons in the past, at least for this game, have brought us 50 plus bundles per season. Season 1's an exception where they brought us 100 plus different bundles, that's insane. So is it possible the season ends up with just about 30 and they're like, you know what, The Haunting was a big enough quote-unquote mid-season event on its own so that kind of justifies only having a good 30 bundles, right? We had a nice movie crossover with Ghostface, another one Donnie Darko and then some other cool bundles which do look fantastic, right? Don't get me wrong we have had some really cool bundles this season but we're really gonna see the lowest amount of bundles added in a Cold War season with the finale of this game's life cycle, season 6 I don't think that's the case. I think we're going to see at least 20 or so more bundles with whatever this update 1.26 is. Now, don't forget that it was already confirmed November the 2nd is the release date of the Hammer and Sickle along with its dedicated bundle. But in the Haunting Roadmap or even in the Haunting Blog Post, there is no mention of, yeah, a Season 6 Reloaded or another big update coming to the game. It even has wording in the blog post that says the Season 6 gets quote-unquote reloaded with the Haunting event itself. So at that moment, I was like, okay, that's probably evidence that the Haunting is going to be like the Haunting we got last year from Modern Warfare, where there wasn't a Season 6 Reloaded, but instead a massive Halloween event with its own roadmap. Modern Warfare had that treatment, there was no other updates after that, aside from the random Year 2 updates with other weapons and maps, but we'll talk about that later. So is Cold War getting the same treatment, or are these two mystery downloads building towards yet another mid-season update, or another DLC drop for that matter? Now something worth mentioning is that 3D artists, like I said earlier, have access to the game's files. That's really obvious by now, right? This isn't supporting data mining or 
quote unquote leaking. We don't say that word on this channel here, as you guys do know. But 3D artists are fully aware that the hammer and sickle melee weapon are already available in the game's files for use, whether it's for art, whether it's somebody out there that somehow force loads it into the game. The hammer and sickle is already in the game's files, which means this upcoming title update isn't for that. The melee weapon already exists in Cold War. So with that being said, it'll be a hot fix that auto releases the hammer and sickle when it's supposed to. So what is this title update for? Could it just be for the season six outro cinematic cutscene? I don't think we'll get a full title update just for that cutscene. And no, it's not for Call of Duty Vanguard either because that's available to buy in the item shop already. If you guys haven't pre-ordered Vanguard yet, it'll come up for you guys already with the Cold War item shop. So with that, what is this title update for? I think the season six outro cutscene will obviously release before the launch of Vanguard, but you never know. It's always possible that it launches even beyond Vanguard release date and maybe late November we got our season 6 outro cutscene possibly another DLC drop because yeah season 6 doesn't end until December the 1st so anything goes until then it doesn't really mean anything if Vanguard releases and season 6 is still active for Cold War the season is still active as we know it, so anything could happen for the duration of that time. Now, in regards to a release date, we're going to get to that in a second. And before we go into exactly how Season 6 Reloaded could work, let's go and take the sponsor of tonight's video. Now, tonight's video is sponsored by Ace Defender, a free-to-play SRPG masterpiece combining authentic, turn-based RPG monster battles with tower defense elements, components of the idol genre, high-quality graphics of the fantasy world, and more. The game has a traditional RPG solo storyline with 40-plus chapters that makes up nearly 2,000 levels. Absolutely insane. Ace Defender also features a rich storyline, a rebellion in the Dragon Clan threatens the balance of good and evil in the world. The heroine, Alpita, the Silver Dragon Princess, escaped with the creation crystal to the human lands. There, she awoke the creation crystal and summoned heroes to fight evil, with your help of course. There are five hero factions, Divine, Demon, Shadow, Nature, and Light, with deep hero background stories. You start with 48 heroes, and there are two new heroes released every two weeks. You can level up, combine heroes, or equip gear to create a powerful lineup. There are also one, two, and four times the gameplay modes to speed up or slow down the action. Expedition is a solo mode in this game. We then have PvE modes where you can explore dungeons and regions, engage in trials, level up your heroes, and collect rare items. There are also PvP modes where you can fight against other players within your own server, the arena, or across servers with the King's Arena with multiple lineups. Now, if you're ready to hop into the action, you can check out the game with the link in this video's description and claim some free rewards, including 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing levels 2 through 8, and you can use those tickets by clicking on Sky City, Tavern, and then Recruit times 10, which you'll see right there. Now be sure to click on the link and claim your free rewards today and thank you to Ace Defender for sponsoring tonight's video. Now back to the video, I think a release date for Season 6 Reloaded is a bit tricky because usually whenever a new update, or a title update I should say, pops up in the PlayStation database, we're a couple of days if not a week away from the preload going live on all platforms. Last week we got the preload for update 1.25 and that was a couple of gigabytes, a good 4 to 5 gigs on PlayStation and 7 gigs on PC, we still don't know what that was even for. But now with this update that's out in the wild, I'm like, all right, what could this mean, right? Will the preload for this go live on Monday for then a DLC release on November the 4th, Thursday? Or will this preload end up going live at some point this week, maybe tomorrow, and then whatever the preload actually is will become installable on this Thursday the 28th? I personally believe the 28th, which is this Thursday, works out better as a quote-unquote final hoorah for Cold War, one last big DLC drop, instead of doing it next Thursday the 4th, which is one day away from a brand new Call of Duty. However, we're all aware that a lot of gaming scoopers out there who reported a lot of accurate information in the past are saying that November the 4th is still the current launch date of Season 6 Reloaded. So with that, I'm like, how much content could be bundled in a big drop like that when it's a day before a whole new Call of Duty? It probably wouldn't be much, right? But you never know, right? Maybe Season 6 Reloaded is just really the release of the outro cinematic cutscene, and that'll drop the day before Vanguard. That's plausible, right? We can theorize about that all day now. But real quickly, before I forget, I wanted to point out that this Wednesday is another state of play event from Sony. I'll be live streaming the entire events here on the channel unless something comes up and I'll be busy with something else. But I should be able to go ahead and live react to you guys out there to whatever announcements we get from Sony themselves. Could this be the day, though, where we end up getting the official marketing for whatever the PlayStation exclusive content is for Vanguard? I mean, 
maybe it won't be the right day for this considering they might only focus on first party titles not third party deals or third party titles altogether and yeah, I get it, right? Call of Duty is a multi-platform game. However, there is some bias with PlayStation considering they've had a contract going with Activision for a number of years now. So I wouldn't be shocked and I wouldn't put it past them to release whatever the trailer is for the PlayStation exclusive content that we're going to get with Call of Duty Vanguard. And it's still completely unknown if it's even zombies related. Could it be multiplayer? Could it be something very minor? I mean, we've had the press already post articles that remind everybody that whatever the content is going to be will be locked behind exclusivity for an entire year, November of 2022. So it must be something on par with Survival for Modern Warfare, Onslaught and Cold War, a mode for that matter that isn't just a throwaway mode, even though Survival kind of was for Modern Warfare, but Onslaught had a lot more going and still does to this day, as you see in the background gameplay with the Onslaught Elite LTM. So I'm hoping that it's a mode that's fun, worthwhile, isn't a throwaway, but also isn't something too crazy like round base that pisses off the Xbox and PC community either. Because I'm all about having everybody get all the content at the same time. I definitely would prefer that, but because of business that exists in the gaming industry, things just aren't that simple. But in case you guys care about Vanguard at all, we also got some marketing earlier this afternoon regarding each new operator and essentially the main crew we're going to have in campaign. We got individual trailers for each character, which was pretty cool, I guess. And we ended up getting a couple of glimpses of new gameplay on a brand new map, also a new shotgun being used. It looked like a ton of fun, right? Sony is marketing Vanguard pretty heavily, as you see today, so that's why I'm saying we're probably days away from whatever the announcement's going to be for the PlayStation exclusive content that we'll also be getting for either Vanguard, Multiplayer, or Warzone. Now, if there's any major marketing left, whether it's surprises, whether it's some bonus multiplayer content, which I think has been hinted at by some gaming scoopers, that should probably all get officially announced this week, since next week is going to be our final countdown to Vanguard, which they could also throw some surprises in, right? They could also randomly market something a couple days before launch but that week will probably be reserved for anything that's final for cold war kind of wrapping up cold war's life cycle and dropping any remaining content that does exist and maybe season six being extended until december the first is just going to be the case just because right maybe it's just going to be the case because they need more time to really polish season one of vanguard the wars and integration so they're like you know what just like modern warfare last year we'll keep this final season active even when a new call of duty comes out just for the sake of doing so it doesn't really mean that anything massive is going to drop during the remainder of the season, but I certainly hope we do get that because there's a lot of maps still apparently on the way for Black Ops Cold War. As I reported on quite a few times now, but as a huge reminder for those out there that haven't kept up on the channel, we have quote unquote a back to black type of vibe with season six that we still haven't seen at all, right? Gaming scoopers for months were claiming that the final season of Cold War would bring us several classic remasters from the Black Ops franchise. Those maps include Launch, Radiation, Plaza, Yemen, Firing Range, and Jungle. We, of course, knew about a lot of other rumors before regarding, what was it, Summits, and even Slums. Slums ended up coming out in both COD Mobile and Cold War, but Summit never did. Fun fact for you is that Summit was a part of a scrapped region of the Scrap Hero Mountains map, which contained a location called Weather Station. So maybe that was the closest we were going to get to a Summit remaster in Cold War. I'm totally cool with them looking at a bunch of other maps that never got brought back a single time, which we've seen so far with Drive-In, Zoo, and lots of others that I'm a huge fan of. So with this remaining list, I guess the question remains, will either of these be dropped for a quote-unquote and potential Season 6 Reloaded, or are they going to be saved for a Modern Warfare type drop like we got over the past year, where out of nowhere, at complete randomness, we end up getting some DLC maps added to multiplayer. Now something I want to stress a lot here, which people out there seem to not understand, I've seen a lot of comments that really blow my mind recently, if a year year two at all happens for Black Ops Cold War, which I certainly think is plausible considering Cold War is the best-selling Call of Duty right now and outpace Modern Warfare. Not saying that Cold War necessarily sold more copies. I think that might be the case, but we'll know more about that in Activision Investors Call next week. Modern Warfare is only the best-selling game for 2019, but Cold War is the best-selling game for 2020 and 2021. So if any game deserves a year two, it's Cold War. But considering Treyarch is leading Vanguard Zombies, I think the best possible scenario is that if there's any year two content, it'll just be for multiplayer. There's no need for more Cold War Zombies content, even though I would certainly love that, since they already have a new Zombies iteration with Vanguard itself. So let's see how they plan this out. And I'm sure you guys are also wondering, well, what's going on with the kill streaks, right? Because we had a list of kill streaks that got rumored, I think, back before season one even released of Cold War, and that list all came true aside from one, right? The list had included at the time a Orbital 
little VSAT, which we now know is the harp. We had a hand cannon annihilator, the thruster, a flamethrower, the death machine. Those all released, but what about the canine unit, the dogs? I mean, that to me is shocking, considering that's a fan favorite kill streak from many previous Black Ops games. So I'm really surprised it didn't bring that one back. It was in Black Ops 1, it was in Black Ops 2. We had something like it in Black Ops 4, not exactly the same thing, but something similar. So I'm like, why not bring the canine unit back since it was a fan favorite in Black Ops 1, and this game is a direct sequel to Black Ops 1 as we know it. So where on earth is the canine unit? Was it a scrapped kill streak? Was it maybe planned at one point and then just fell through for whatever reason, ran out of time. I'm wondering what happened with that, but I'll throw this out there, right? It is possible out of nowhere we get one final kill streak added to colder multiplayer before the end of season six. They didn't ever regard the flamethrower as the final kill streak for the DLC cycle, so I still feel like one is still possible before this game is over. It could even be a new kill streak that we don't know about at all. Now, I personally don't think we're gonna get any more DLC weapons either. I think it's always possible that maybe, like with Modern Warfare, at random over the next few months, we end up getting a couple of minor DLC weapons that may have been finished but haven't released. I think once 3D artists begin to understand what this new update that was found actually is, then they could probably determine if any other weapons are completed in the files, any other content that is just sitting there waiting to be released. I'm wondering if it's a scenario similar to a Zombies Chronicles 2 or Mod Over 2 Remastered Multiplayer where there's content done but Activision is like, hmm, do we have to release that right now or can we save it for a better time when it might be more necessary? That could be the case when it comes to a quote-unquote year two of Cold War. If Fangor doesn't do well at any point throughout the year, then I could see Activision saying, you know what, Cold War is still our best-selling game for two years in a row. Let's go ahead and drop some more content for the game itself. Whether it's weapons, whether it's maps, the works. Now, lastly, when it comes to Warzone, there is still quite a bit of content left for Season 6 and what is considered the finale of Verdansk 84. We're not going to see Verdansk anymore for who knows how long, but as a bit of a wrap-up party for that map, we are going to get another live event called Warzone Flashback, or Operation Flashback, I guess you can call it, where it'll be a live event that we say our goodbyes to Verdanskin, and I guess it's gonna bring us around different parts of the map and show us kind of where the map started, where it is today. So, yeah, a bit of uh, farewell notes for the map itself before it goes away permanently with the launch of Warzone Pacific and the Vanguard integration. Now, the World Series of Warzone trailer that came out many months ago did give us a bit of a snippet of gameplay in the Underground Mines area. That's an area that was confirmed back during Season 3 to be opened up at some point. And I mentioned this briefly in a video yesterday. People on YouTube have already posted videos showing how to get in there, and it's not intentional, you're not meant to be in there. However, loot does spawn down there. So, with that being said, it's meant for us to eventually get down there, but just not right now. It's not worth showing the footage on screen in the case Activision strikes down that content. You know, they're not really a fan of when you leak out upcoming points of interest over in Warzone, which we've seen plenty of in the past, so let's not go ahead and do that here in this video. Now, there is one last thing I want to wrap up this video with, and that's in regards to Fireteam, Combined Arms, and even Outbreak. So I think to start with Outbreak, it's obvious. Treyarch's busy with Vanguard Zombies, doesn't have much time to update Colder Zombies at all. As much as I would like to see that, I think that's it in terms of LTMs, regions, world events, mechanics. Outbreak seems to be done, but Outbreak 2.0 is being reshaped as Dur on Fung and whatever else Vanguard Zombies will offer. But for Fireteam and Combined Arms, it doesn't look like the player counts would have justified them adding more DLC to those modes. Much as I wanted to see that, I think Fireteam is a fantastic game, but I'm a bit salty that we haven't gotten any new regions ever since Duga, and Combined Arms only got Collateral, the only DLC Combined Arms map that we got in this game. So I think the player count probably determined whether or not they would get updates at any point in the future. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comments section. What are your thoughts on a potential Season 6 Reloaded? Does one exist? Is the mystery download from today signaling anything massive coming to the game in the next week? It possibly is. And also, what are your thoughts on the other content we went over regarding the future of Cold War as we know it? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.